हेलो एवरी वन गुड मॉर्निंग हाउ आर यू ऑल वेलकम टू वन पेज बायोलॉजी सो इन टूडेज वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस एन इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक विच इज कॉल्ड एज लिपिड बायोसिंथेसिस सो दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फॉर ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स हु आर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर सी एस आई आर नेट लाइफ साइंस एग्जामिनेशन और इवन फॉर दोज हु आर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर सेट और अदर पी एच डी रिलेटेड एंट्रेंस एग्जाम्स and uh, this same topic is part of uh, many of the biotechnology uh, courses which are part of uh, the bsc or even the msc uh, degrees in the respective colleges so let us understand this topic so first of all what exactly are lipids now lipids are basically one type of biomolecules as we already know inside the cell there are different types of biomolecules there are proteins there are carbohydrates at the same time there are different types of uh, ions which are present water molecule which is one of the most important biomolecule of the cell at the same time there is lipid which is also an important biomolecule which is part of the cell so lipids are basically hydrocarbons they are made up of hydrogen and carbon and they are basically having different types of derivatives we can say that the triacylglycerols or diacylglycerols or monoacylglycerols these are majorly the storage forms of lipids whereas waxes if you talk these are a different type of a lipid it is a derivative of lipid similarly there are some other types of lipids like for example phospholipids these are also modified forms of diacylglycerols or triacylglycerols and phospholipids are part of the membranes of a particular cell so phospholipids are present inside the bacterial cell membrane or the fungal cell membrane or even the eukaryotic cell membrane and phospholipids are very very important because they help in cell signaling also an important example of lipid is nothing but cholesterol cholesterol is also a type of a derived lipid but it is majorly a different type of lipid because it has got a different structure compared to the diacylglycerols or triacylglycerols or even the phospholipids so we will be also discussing the structure of cholesterol in some another video we will be we will be discussing about how the cholesterol is synthesized in the cells but in this video as we said we are going to mainly talk about the storage lipids plus there is also an important example of lipid which is also called as uh, capirons now capirons are basically a type of lipid molecules which majorly help in protein foldings so remember that is one of the examples of lipid molecules if you talk about what exactly lipids are made up of so the answer to this question is lipids majorly the triacylglycerols or diacylglycerols these are majorly formed of two main components one is majorly a fatty acid and second is glycerol so that's why lipids are majorly defined as the fatty acid esters of glycerol and that's what we are going to also see in the coming slides that how the lipids are going to be formed so in simple words they are fatty acid esters of glycerol and these fatty acids depending upon the presence of double bond or single bond they can be further classified as saturated fatty acids or unsaturated fatty acids so if the fatty acids have single bond then they are classified as saturated fatty acids and if they have double bond then they are classified as unsaturated fatty acid and depending upon the number of carbon atoms they have they can be of different types right from c4 carbon to c36 carbon so there are different type of fatty acids depending upon the number of carbon atoms so as you can see now there are different examples of saturated fatty acids depending upon the number of carbon atoms they have so we have lauric acid which is made up of 12 carbon atoms then there is myristic acid which is made up of 14 carbon atoms palmitic acid which is made up of 16 carbon atoms so we are going to see in this video how the palmitic acid is going to be formed 
So likewise, there are different types of fatty acids based on the number of carbon atoms. And one thing which you can notice that as the carbon atoms are increasing, the melting point of that particular fatty acid is also increasing. So you can see that the melting uh, point of lauric acid is 44 uh, degrees Celsius, whereas that in case of a myristic acid is 53 and that in case of palmitic acid is 63. So that means as the number of carbon atoms increases in fatty acids, the melting point is also increasing. Now again, these are few examples of unsaturated fatty acids. So as we uh, discussed earlier that fatty acids, depending on the presence of single or double bond, they can be either saturated or unsaturated. So if they have only single bonds, then they are called as saturated fatty acids. If they have double bonds, then they will be classified as unsaturated fatty acids. So these are some examples of unsaturated fatty acid. In this we have palmitolic acid, then there is oleic acid, linolenic acid, uh, arachidonic acid, etc. So again, depending on the number of carbon atoms, there are different types of unsaturated fatty acids. One thing you can notice now in case of unsaturated fatty acids, the melting point is very low and most of these unsaturated fatty acids are liquid at normal room temperatures. So the best example is most of the vegetable oils which we generally use for cooking. These are the excellent examples of unsaturated fatty acids because they are liquid at room temperatures. So they have a very low melting point. Whereas saturated fatty acids are generally solid in nature because they have a higher melting point. So now let's understand the formation of a lipid. So as we discussed that lipids are majorly fatty acid esters of glycerol. So that means lipids consist of two main components. One is a three carbon compound which is called as glycerol and they also have a long chain of a fatty acid. So as you can see in this particular diagram that there is this particular three carbon compound which is called as glycerol. So and at the same time there is this particular structure which is called as triacyl glycerol. Now what is triacyl glycerol? Triacyl glycerol is basically a fatty acid ester of a glycerol. That means this particular as you can see this is a structure of glycerol there are three carbon atoms and on each of these carbon atom the OH group the hydrogen has been now replaced by a fatty acid chain so there are now three fatty acid chains attached to this particular glycerol and since there are three fatty acids attached it will be a triacyl glycerol so if there are only two fatty acid chains then the resultant structure will be a diacyl glycerol if there is only a single fatty acid chain then the resultant structure will be a monoacyl glycerol. So this is an example of a triacyl glycerol. What we need to know is majorly the storage lipids, whether these are monoacyl, diacyl or triacyl glycerols, these are nothing but the fatty acid esters of glycerol. So basically now we can see that there are different types of lipids in the cell. As we said, there are storage lipids which can be diacyl glycerols or triacyl glycerols or monoacyl glycerols. So here you can see that in triacyl glycerols there is a glycerol main backbone which has got three fatty acids. That's why it's a triacyl glycerol. The other type of lipids present in the cell apart from storage lipids are the membrane lipids since they are present in the membrane of the cell. So they, are, they can be of different types. Basically they can be phospholipids. So phospholipids generally you can see in the structure that here the main backbone is glycerol again then there are two fatty acids but on the third carbon instead of fatty acid there is a phosphate group so if there is a phosphate group on the third carbon then that will be a phospholipid but along with the phos phosphate group there is one alcohol which is attached to it so this will be an example of a glycerophospholipid so likewise depending upon different types of head groups which are attached so in certain cases if the head group is let's say for example a particular amino acid for example, if there is serine, which is a very common type of a amino acid attached to this particular phos phosphate group, then such a type of a phospholipid will be called as phosphatidyl serine. So likewise, there are different types of uh, head groups which can be attached to the phospholipids and accordingly different types of phospholipids can be formed in the cell. Also, there is different types of 
phospholipids all together which have a different type of uh, backbone apart from glycerol so this is sphingosine which is a different type of a backbone and in this case there is only a single fatty acid plus a phosphate group which is attached to a different type of amino acid called as choline so the resultant type of a phospholipid is called as sphingolipids and these sphingolipids are generally present in the membranes of the neurons so likewise there are different types of uh, membrane lipids present in the different types of cell membranes 